This video demonstrates how to do the process capability snapshot technique in the SPC for Excel software. Essentially what you do is you enter your data into the an Excel worksheet. In this case I have it in column A. The for, my variable name is X and I have 100 data points underneath that. You can have it anywhere you want on the, on the worksheet. And then to run the analysis you go to SPC for Excel. You go to the process capability panel and select snapshot. Then you have two options, a normal distribution or the non-normal distribution. We're going to do the normal distribution, so I'm going to select OK. And then we have to enter our information. Well, I've already got the variable name in there, X, and this is the data that was automatically selected by the software. I'm going to put in my specifications. My lower spec is 65, my upper spec is 145, and we won't have a target on this. And there's some options we'll talk about in a little while. So I'm going to select OK and it generates the output for the process capability snapshot for this variable. Now we're ready to interpret the res results that we have. We have four charts on the process capability snapshot. One is the CPK chart, it's the process capability chart. Then we have a normal probability plot, and then we have our control charts, in this case the X chart and the moving range chart. And we have some statistics down here. What you're looking for on the CPK chart is you're looking at the engineering tolerance, which is the upper spec minus the lower spec, and you're going to compare them to the natural tolerance, which is plus or minus three sigma limits. And we have two of those. The blue are the using the estimated standard deviation, the estimated sigma from a moving range chart, where the black is the calculated standard deviation. In this case, they're very close. So you can then see kind of a feel of how these compare to the specifications. You also get your histogram, can you kind of see if it's normally distributed or not, as well as a normal curve uh, put on top of that histogram. The normal probability plot down here uh, is looking to see if the data is normally distributed. You will get a value of the Anderson Darling statistic, and you'll also get a p-value, and the p-value is the key thing to look at. If it's if it's uh, greater than 0 0.05, you're going to assume that you have a normal distribution. And then you have your control charts where you can check for control. We have the X chart here, and we have the moving range chart down here because the data was in a single column, so we assumed it was an individual's chart. If you had subgroups, it'd be in multiple columns, and this would be an X bar and then an R chart. Then down below, we have our, our capability statistics. This is the within capability statistics, okay, where we have CP, CPK, etc. You have your estimated sigma from the range chart. And then here we have our overall capabilities, and these are based on the calculated sigma. And then over here we have our, our control limit values printed out for you. So this is the output then from the process capability snapshot. Now let's take a look at some of the options. So let's take a look at some of the options with the process capability snapshot. So we'll go back and start the process again. I'm going to select normal distribution again come up and we have of course to enter our specifications etc and here are the options you have some plot and sigma options the two normal curves that you saw on the histogram and the CPK chart you can include those or not include those if you like you also can include the plus or minus three sigma lines based on the estimated sigma or the plus or minus three sigma lines based on the calculated sigma you have the options to include those or not include those you can plot the average if you'd like and you can shade the histogram now for subgroups, we don't have subgroups here, we have individual values, but if we add subgroups, you have some options. You can either, to estimate sigma, you can either use the pooled variance, the average subgroup range, or the average subgroup standard deviation. Other options we have are out of control test. You can decide what out of control test you want to use on the X chart and, and the range chart. And what comes up here or whatever you have set for the defaults in your SPC for Excel software program. But you can change them just for this analysis if you want. You can also in historical values for the average and the value of sigma. In this case, the software will use the value you use entered here instead of those that are calculated from the uh, control chart. And you can also transform the data. You can transform the data using a Box-Cox transformation or Johnson transformation if you want to try, if you're trying to make non-normal data normally distributed. You can try one of these two transformations. 
And also you can change the number of classes on the histogram. For example, you may want to have 20 classes instead of the number we had, or you can include the class width or the lower class boundary. I'm just going to put this at 20, select OK, come back and put in our specifications again. May not be exactly what they were before. And now you can see we have the, the more bars on the histogram and the process capability chart. But these are some of the options that you can use with the process capability snapshot. Thank you.